MMAOddsBreaker.com proudly presents the Premium Oddscast, your home for the best fight picks, bets, analysis, and statistics hosted by leading MMA oddsmaker Nick Kalikas, fight scientist and author of Fightnomics, Reed Kuhn, and myself, MMA journalist Brian Eminger. Get an inside track from the experts as part of MMAOddsBreaker.com's premium betting service. Welcome to part two of the Premium Oddscast, presented by Five Dimes, your home for the best MMA bets, straight from the source, MMA odds maker Nick Kalikas. I'm MMA journalist Brian Hemminger, here with you today to discuss our upcoming plays for tonight's UFC Fight Night 33 event. Before I get to that, let's briefly recap last week's bets. Hopefully you were tailing our plays because we had a pretty big night. Our three premium picks went 2-1 and one overall, cashing on Tom Ninamaki and Nate Diaz each for 3.5 units at plus money, while our play for three units on Ryan Benoit came up short for three units. Our other three play, a parlay on Juliana Pena and Sean Spencer, cashed for three units at plus 123, so combined we were a positive 9.37 units on the night if you include the free play, while our premium alone was very positive at 5.68 units. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's delve right into our premium plays. We already broke down each fight pretty extensively with fight scientist Reed Kuhn in part one of the premium oddscast. Our first play involves the first fight of the UFC Fight Night 33 main card between women's bantamweight Julie Kedzi and debuting undefeated Brazilian Beth Correa. What's our play, Nick? Well, obviously on part one of the premium oddscast, we did pick Kedzi as a, our official pick. But again, this is the betting part of the podcast, so I do find value at the current price on Correa. She's at plus 185. I open the line on Kedzie at minus 190. Now, a lot of times that doesn't really indicate if there's value or not for me um, based on the public opinion. I've, I've stated that in previous podcasts before. So I don't um, really pick my plays based on line movements or whatnot. But in this spot here, I do think the general early action is wrong, and I do think there is value um, based on the way the line did move. And I'm, I'm loving right now because I do think this is going to be such a competitive fight that if it hits the cards, it's going to be possibly a split decision or a 29-28 across the board unanimous type of decision, but a close competitive one. And I believe it's a toss-up, really, because Correa likes to push the pace. She likes to come forward. Her takedown defense is solid. Her offensive wrestling is solid as well. And she does nothing but improve her overall game. I mean, from the footage, you could tell fight by fight, I mean, different level of competition, of course, but fight by fight, she does improve her game. So I believe she's going to come in here um, the hungrier fighter. Kezi is on a little bit of a decline, possibly. So all signs indicate there is value on Correa here at, again, plus 185. So we're going to put three units on her, and I think she's going to be competitive enough that we're going to probably take home a decision here. Yeah, I agree that there's definitely really good value here. And you got to remember, you know, fade the women's MMA pioneer. We've seen time and time again these – you know, women that have been around the sport for a long time, now that it's time for UFC to start picking up the division, their other fresh blood is coming in and, you know, just beating them up. You know, Rosie Sexton, Kedji's on a three-fight losing streak herself. You just look down the line. Even Shayna Baszler uh, on the Ultimate Fighter, it's crazy. So, you know, you, you can't discount that fact. Uh, fade the women's MMA pioneers. I hate to say it because I love women's MMA, but it, it's something that makes a lot of sense right now from a betting perspective. Now, moving on, uh, we have two guys from the Ultimate Fighter Season 17 taking each other on. First pick from uh, Team Jones, Clint Hester, against the last pick from Team Jones, Dylan Andrews. So what's your take on this one, and what's our bet? Now, this is a spot that I did straight out pick my bet here. It's going to be Hester for three units. I do like the price at plus 130. I know that it's going to be another competitive bout. I know that Andrews is, again, the, probably the more well-rounded, the better overall fighter. But I just like, again, Hester's improvement. I think he's going to be able to control where this fight goes. He's not going to be spending much time off his back. So I don't think there's going to be much threat of a submission as far as Andrews goes. And I think on the feet it's going to be competitive. I know Andrews can uh, deliver some punishment, but I like Hester a little bit more. I think his boxing is going to be sufficient enough. And I think, again, his damaging elbows and knees are going to come into play as well. So I think he can win, win at least a close decision and again at the price plus 130 uh, you got to go with it so three units on Hester he can win a close decision he can win by possible stoppage as well um, I do see some value in him so Hester's the play for me mm -hmm. and we all know you know Hester's biggest weakness is the ground and that's just not one of Andrew's strength so uh, you know if Andrews wanted to take advantage of that I don't really think he could this fight is probably going to take place mostly on the feet maybe against the fence a little bit but you know if they're stuck standing I think Hester more than can hold his own here and you know, probably you know, outwork 
Andrews. Well, that does it for our sides. Now, we're going to move on to some totals here that we really like. Uh, Nick, what are you really thinking about with this Ryan Bader, Anthony Perroche light heavyweight fight? Well, I mean, I do see some value. Right now, the total is um, sitting at one and a half under around minus 160 or so. So, got to recommend a two-unit play because I do think that Bader's knockout power, his wrestling, um, in combination with Perosh's, uh chin and his age factor, I mean, is not a good thing at all. And not just that. I mean, the safer bet here also is if Perosh does happen to pull off uh, the flukish stuff that he did kind of against Benny, not take anything away from him, but if he does happen to rock Bader, catch him, maybe rock him and catch him by sub or something like that, and it goes under, you're a little bit safer there as well. But ultimately, I do believe that Bader's going to knock out Perosh. Um, he's a better fighter again overall. I think he's going to have what it takes to keep this fight up, and he's going to deliver punishment. He hits like a truck, and Perosh's chin is not going to be able to take it. So under one and a half rounds, right now the price is at minus 160. Um, we're going to do it for two units. But, of course, um, by the time we post our plays, line could change a little bit. So make sure you guys do pay attention and follow um, the exact unit sizes and the exact lines that we do post on the premium uh, page there at MMAosbreaker.com. Yeah, and, you know, it, this also goes back to the times where, you know, Ryan Bader had a tough fight, and then they follow it up, uh, basically giving him a rebound opportunity, or, you know, after he had a loss, a rebound opportunity against somebody that's just not on his level. Um, you know, after uh, he lost to Tito, which, you know, he probably should have beat anyway, but after he lost to Tito, he faced Jason Brills, destroyed him in a minute 17. After he lost to Machida, they give him Vladimir Matyshenko, he destroys him in 50 seconds. So, you know, after this Glover fight, where, you know, he was competitive with Glover Teixeira, you know, they're giving him Anthony Parosh, who, you know, is a very, very beatable opponent. So, and as you say, the under uh, also saves us in case Vader does get clipped, because, you know, his chin isn't perfect. So, I really like this play. Now, uh, we have one more, and it is uh, Mark Hunt, Antonio Silva. So, what do you like about this one? Well, we all kind of discussed it on the first part of the podcast, uh, which we said we like the under here. I think that both these guys are extremely talented heavyweights in what they do. And Hunt hits like a truck, no doubt about it. Silva has a suspect chin. We all know that as well. Um, so that's not a good combination. But my factor here, I would rather bet, I think, um, Hunt than Silva. I wouldn't want to lay the juice, even though I did pick Silva um, in part one to win the fight, because I think he's a better overall fighter. But I think there's more value, possibly, on the Mark Hunt play. But in this spot, no matter if Silva gets the fight to the ground, gets position, and does ground upon him, that's my fear here. I think he can get positional control on Mark Hunt and possibly ground upon him out, or even get a Camaro, like I said, Americana, something like that, lock up a submission. That being said, I think Hunt keeps it on the feet, and he could probably knock him out as well. Either way it plays out, under one and a half, I expect to hit. So at minus 140, this is another two-unit play for us because with everything, again, with their age, with the huge target on Silva's head, with the knockout power of Hunt, um, with the ability that Silva does have on the ground, I think we should hit this as well. So, again, under one and a half, minus 140 for two units. Um, I do like both of those totals, and I think uh, there's a good chance they both come through for us. Oh, excellent. And, you know, there's not much else I can add, you know, Antonio Silva has a very hittable face. He's got a really big head, and he doesn't have a great chin. And if Mark Hunt connects, he's going down. As we've seen, Mark Hunt's ground game, historically very bad. So Antonio Silva can take advantage of that. You know, Antonio Silva could even clip him standing. Who knows? Uh, but I, I like this uh, under 1.5 as well. Now, that does it for our premium picks, but we also have one more free play that we're going to be giving out right after recording this podcast. It will also be available uh, on MMA Oddsbreaker Premium. So you can check it out. We have a parlay. So uh, what are the two fighters you like for this two-person parlay, Nick? Well, the first part of our 2 team parlay, we're going to start with Justin Scoggins. He's sitting around minus 240 right now at five dimes. And we all spoke about how talented the guy is, what kind of prospect, and what he brings to the table with his striking. I do think he's going to be able to keep the fight standing and utilize that efficient and effective striking to get the W here. So Scoggins is going to be piece one at minus 240, and we're going to combine him with a guy we were just talking about, actually, Ryan Bader. He's going to be the other part of our parlay. Now he's sitting around minus 500 or so. And we did give out um, the under, of course, and the pro Bader fights in as far as the premium play, and I do think Bader's going to get the job done. I don't think it's going to be Proch coming through with a W here, so I think we're pretty safe to say he's going to be able to, again, keep the fight up and land that knockout power and land that knockout punch over Proch. So a two-team parlay with Bader at minus 500 and, again, Scoggins at around minus 240. It's actually going to be minus 142 combined the two, so it's going to be 4.29 units to win three units for our free play. All right, excellent. And, and these are both plays that we have a lot of confidence in, both guys, 
are not just expected to win, uh, but in my opinion, I think they're both going to dominate. So look for them to, to not only win, but win impressively. And uh, that does it for all of our plays, but stay tuned to at Premium Oddscast on Twitter. We're going to be giving away a couple more free plays the rest of the weekend. They won't be on this Premium Oddscast because uh, the events are taking place on Saturday, so we'll probably be giving them away maybe tomorrow or later tonight. Uh, they'll be for the upcoming Invicta event and for World Series of Fighting. So a lot of value there. So stay tuned to at Premium Oddcast on Twitter. So that does it for tonight's part two of the Premium Oddcast. Thank you guys for listening. Happy betting, everybody. For myself, Brian Hemmer, and the main maker Nick Kalikas. This is Premium Oddcast signing out. So fun, everybody.